Following on from my previous video about creating a vase for 3D printing, here are three more sophisticated versions. I'll cover these as three different sections within this video. But we have a modelled vase, a sculpted vase, and a funny looking vase done in a funny way. We'll start with the modelled vase. Now of course the first thing to do is to delete everything, so A, X, delete. For this vase the first thing we're going to need is a circle. Now making sure we are in edit mode and all vertices are selected with A, we will extrude it along the Z axis. I have face orientation on and my normals are the wrong way around. They're showing red. So if we go here and we go down to normals and flip, we'll put it the right way around. Now what we want to do is to select four points on the top and bottom of this cylinder. This is easiest in orthographic mode. So press this little Z thingy and then select four opposing vertices like this. And then press the little Z thingy again and you'll get the other side and select the same ones. You can actually see them quite easily this way. So there you have it. So having got this, we'll go into object mode and add a subdivision surface modifier. This is basically so that we can see what happens when we move these vertices. So turn proportional editing on and scale shift Z. This will scale on all axes apart from the Z axis, which allow you to move these vertices in and out, creating this lovely little flowery shape. Keep doing this until you're happy. In my case, I'm never happy with this, but this will have to do. Now we'll select all the vertices along the top with Alt and left mouse button, and then we will scale them out. Yep. So this looks about okay. Now we'll need to make a flat base, but because we're using a subdivision surface modifier, we need to get the vertices to behave as if they were sharp. So if you select them all with Alt and left mouse and press Shift E and then drag the mouse, these edges will now be sharp for the subdivision surface modifier. Now we fill it in with E, click the left mouse button without moving it, press M at center. There are other ways to fill it, but this time we're going to do it that way. Now if you intend to print this in vase mode, you will have to do the same thing to the vertices at the top as well. But we're not going to do that. We're going to add a solidify modifier, give it some thickness, and there you go, a lovely vase. However, you can't print that in vase mode. So let's get rid of this solidify modifier and assume we're going to do it in vase mode. So we fill in the top in the same way as we did before. Alt and left mouse button to select, shift and E, drag the mouse, and then E, left click the mouse without moving it, M at center. Now you have a vase that will print in vase mode if you select the correct options on your printer, of course. And just to demonstrate this, in the top right hand corner, you can see this model sliced in vase mode using Prusa Slicer. So there you go. Let's go back to the beginning. And this time, we'll look at the swirly sculpted vase. Oh no, here we are again. Let's delete everything. A, X, delete. For this vase, we'll probably want to make sure that Loop Tools is enabled. Go into Edit, into Preferences, then into Add-ons, and type Loop Tools over here then make sure the little checkbox is checked and you're done. So you can close that window. Now we will start this vase with another circle. In edit mode, we're going to extrude this twice, something like this. And I see I have the same problem with the normals. So we will go into mesh, normals, flip again. 
Now we want to select this middle ring of vertices with Alt and left click and scale them out. Press S and drag it out and perhaps adjust the top in a similar way. Again we'll need a flat base so select the vertices with Alt left mouse and press F. Now you could have done it the same way as before but this is just a different way of filling it out. Now we're going to need to do a little bit of preparatory sculpt work for this one. So go into sculpt mode and find the draw face sets brush. And we're going to draw a face set on the bottom. I think my brush is a little small so with F I will make it a little bit bigger and just click. And there we have a face set. Yours might be a different color. We'll see what this is for later. Now back into object mode. And here we're going to add a multi-resolution modifier, not the subdivision surface, a multi-resolution modifier. Click the subdivide button maybe five times and you'll see what happens to the bottom of ours if the edges are not sharp. So perhaps we'd probably sharpen them up. Select all the vertices as before. Press Shift and E, nice and purple a bit more purple and now if we go back into object mode you can see we have a flat base but I don't really like this so back in edit mode and select the top vertices scale them in and do the same with the bottom just a little bit that looks a bit better so now for the exciting bit Go into sculpt mode. Now I'm going to turn on the X and Y mirroring. Uh, it's not necessary, but I think it'd be better. Then I will select the draw brush. And now to use the face set that we created, click this and then go down into advanced and select face sets. This will mask the base. Now change the stroke from space, which is what it probably is at the moment, to line. With this stroke option enabled, the brush will not do anything except draw a line. But when you let go of the mouse, it will fill in the line with the brush that you're using. So draw little lines all over your vase. Spin it around and draw lines. Make little ones or big ones. You can, if you want to, change the strength of some of them. But it doesn't really have to look that great. But just go around and fiddle with it. Perhaps another little one here would be nice. Now one more, slightly bigger and slightly less strength one. I don't know why, perhaps just because I can. The reason we have this face set that we did at the beginning was so that our lines don't go over the bottom of the vase and kept it flat. Anyway, back to object mode. And we're going to add a simple deform modifier eventually and if you change it to the z-axis here and change this angle we get a very nice swirl as you see here and if we then add a solidify modifier and give it a little bit more thickness we have a nice vase that can be 3d printed now it's not ideal as it is as you can see it's not as smooth as it could be so I'm just going to turn the solidify off add a subdivision surface modifier and then move it above the solidify like this and then turn the solidify back on again and that looks a lot better it won't print in vase mode and if we want to print in vase mode we should have made the top flat when we did the base but if we changed our mind let's just get rid of the solidify and the subdivision Turn off the simple deform and apply the multi-resolution modifier. We'll have to make the top flat. So in edit mode, you've got to select the top loop. And that's not going to be easy, but you can do it if you're very careful with your alt and left click. And there it is selected. And we're going to flatten this with loop tools. In the end panel, edit, under loop tools, flatten. This will take 
ages. Possibly even a couple of minutes. But when it's done, you can fill in the hole at the top with F. And now this will print in vase mode. You could probably use scale Z0 instead of loop tools, but anyway, this is what we have now. It's not too shabby, however you want to print it. OK, let's go back to the beginning and do the last one. So this time we're going to do the funny looking bars. You know the drill. A, X, delete. Here we go. Now this is my favourite method. We start off by creating a mesh and a single vertex. And then, using the funny little gizmo thing, select the X orthographic view. And now we're going to extrude this single vertex along the Y axis. Press E, and then drag it along the Y axis. And then do it again a small way, just to make the sharp base of the vase. And now what you want to do is make half a vase shape like this, by extruding. And then when we're done in object mode, we're going to add a modifier and we're going to add the screw modifier. Again, the normals are the wrong way around, but at least we've got an option for that here. Flip that, turn off smooth shading. And you can see we already have something that looks a bit odd. Anyway, add a subdivision surface modifier, increase the steps and that's actually not so bad. But what I like about this method is in edit mode, you just have a few vertices and grabbing them and moving around changes the whole shape of the vase. But this has got an open top and let's say we want to print this in vase mode. So we'll have to fill in the top. And the way to do this here is go into the screw modifier and press this little tick box marked merge and then if we grab the top vertex and extrude it along the Y by pressing E and Y it fills it in rather satisfyingly and rather funkily so there you go but the top doesn't have a sharp edge and it's not obvious how to do that select the top edges and subdivide you get another vertex which you can GG along the top and it will sharpen up as you see. Now I think I should demonstrate just fiddling about with moving some of these vertices. So let's move some vertices. There's one. Didn't work it very well. Let's turn on proportional editing and by increasing the size of the circle with the middle mouse button you can change the effect of the move. But if I'm really honest, I don't really like these very much. So let's go back with Control Z until we get to back where I was. OK, this will print nicely in vase mode, but the vase we're making won't. So we need to take this top off. Select those two vertices at the top and just delete them. And now we have an open vase again. But let's add a new modifier. We add a wireframe modifier. And then move it above the subdivision surface modifier we have there. And that looks very funky. Increase the thickness and just how funky can it get? Uh, we have a little bit of red stuff over there. So hit the boundary button and that makes everything printable. Though I wouldn't fancy putting the supports in for that, and it won't print in vase mode. But for all that, if you could be bothered to support it, then I think it would look quite nice. So, let's go back to the beginning. There's your three vases, and if you click on the pop-out box on the right, you'll be able to see my original vase video. And if you click on the one on the bottom left, you'll find out how to turn on face orientation in Blender without screwing it up completely.